welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my one month post-op update, which just seems a little bit, a little bit mad to me because whilst it has been probably the longest month of my life, probably, it also feels like the past four weeks have just whizzed by so quickly. So if you are new here, hello, thank you so much for joining. My name is Trina Louise. I have recently had a gastric bypass. I had mine on the 2nd of September and I have been documenting my journey from pre-op to having the surgery and now to give you my one month post-op update. And I'm gonna continue updating you as time continues to fly by apparently. So if you are interested in knowing more about weight loss, surgery or if you want to know about my weight loss surgery journey then please do subscribe and stick around because I have lots of videos coming. My next video I think surgery related is going to be a Q&A so if you have any questions that you want me to answer pop them down in the comments and I will be putting together a list of sort of the most asked questions that I've received and that will be coming quite soon. So in today's video I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the first four weeks and my experience post-op and um, the various food stages that I've been through and then at the end we'll have an update on my weight loss so far. So let's take it back to the first couple of days after the surgery. So I was vlogging the first couple of days after surgery in my surgery vlog. I'll link that in the cards if you haven't seen it. And in fact, I'll pop a playlist down below of all my surgery related videos up to date. So as I was saying, the first couple of days I did kind of include in that vlog. So I'll talk about the first week as a whole. At that point, I was on the liquid diet. So Every dietitian with every surgeon sets your diets a little bit differently, but they do tend to follow the same kind of theme. So first of all, you start off on the liquid diet. So that meant for me, I could only have uh, liquids, obviously, as it says on the tin. So I could have copper soups, but I had to strain the copper soups because I couldn't have any of the bits or the herbs or anything. I could have various different soups um, as long as they were quite thin. So if they were a thicker soup, I would have to water them down. I could have yogurt so I could make smoothies as long as they weren't too thick. And again, I could water them down. I could have protein shakes. I could have it's probably about it, yogurt, I've probably said milk, anything that was a liquid that wasn't too thick that would fit through a strainer. I found this very difficult. I am not someone that is a massive fan of soups and I really don't enjoy synthetic protein products. So I don't enjoy protein shakes, be that pre-made or ones that you make mix up yourself with powder. I don't enjoy protein yogurts. I love yogurt, but not protein yogurts. Something about synthetic protein taste just doesn't gel with me. So I found that quite a difficult period. I and didn't feel too bad in myself. I was not necessarily in pain. Um, the pain subsided from the surgery pretty quickly, sort of two days post-op, I wasn't feeling much pain. And a week post-op, I was pretty much off painkillers. So the pain wasn't so much the problem, but what I did struggle with is walking. And this is something that I'm still struggling with a bit. So when I walk, at the time, it was probably more than five minutes. I could probably do about 15 minutes now. But when I walk, after a certain period of time, it starts to feel like I've had the most intense abs workout of my life. Like my stomach muscles are aching. So that is sort of an ongoing thing. I imagine it's because I've had surgery on my stomach <laughs> and I imagine with every week I'll get a little bit stronger and a bit more able. But the first week was a little bit of a blur. Um, I was on painkillers here and there, some pretty strong painkillers at points, particularly to help me through the night because I was struggling a bit with getting cramps in my legs. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily get full on cramp, but you know that feeling when you're like, oh, a cramp is coming, um, but it doesn't actually, you manage to like shake it off. I was having that a lot. So I was recommended to drink some orange Lucozades, not the fizzy ones, the still ones, like the sports drink, just to help to get some electrolytes back into my body. And that did help. So the first week was a bit of a blur. I was off work, so I just spent quite a lot of time in bed watching TV, trying to get these liquids down that I really just wasn't enjoying. And the second week was kind of similar, to be honest. I was again off work and I was on the liquid diet. 
starting to get more strong, starting to feel like I needed painkillers a lot less. I got to the point where I could maybe walk 10 minutes. Um, we went for a walk around HomeSense at the weekend and that was great but by the end of it I had to go and sit in the car because I was really feeling it in my stomach. So the first two weeks were a lot of naps, a lot of rest, not much pain in comparison to what I thought I was going to feel. Like I had no incision pain at any point. The, f the pain really was in the first day and as you'll have seen in my vlog it wasn't really it wasn't great but it was never anywhere as near as I thought it was gonna be so I stayed on the liquid diet for almost two weeks but my dietitian did take the decision to move me on to the next food stage I think it was a couple of days early because I was really struggling to get anything into my body because of my dislike of all things synthetic protein. I was really struggling to get protein in. And if you don't know, protein post weight loss surgery is the most important food group. If you have any questions about sort of the post-op diet or um, like why protein is so important and that sort of thing, let me know below and I can look at including that in my Q&A video or in a separate video, something like that. So we moved me on to the pureed stage. I think I said soft food, I meant pureed. So this meant that all my food pretty much had to go into a blender. And that was a struggle for me as well. <laughs> the, basically, headline of this update is that I have struggled with food <laughs> in the past couple of weeks. Um, so the pureed stage is pretty much food needs to go into a blender. So if you have shepherd's pie, for example, so maybe you'd have like two spoons of the mince and one spoon of the mash, that goes in the blender. My brain cannot handle the thought of pureed food. This was an absolute struggle for me. So what I had to do was kind of take a different approach, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend you take unless you speak to your dietitian. Like remember everyone's program is different, but I would take, if I was having shepherd's pie, I would put what I, portion out what I could have on the plate, mush it together with a fork, so it wasn't blended but it was pretty mushed, and then chew it a million times till I essentially pureed it in my mouth before I swallowed it, because that my brain could get around rather than sticking it in a blender and doing it that way. Um, so that's sort of the approach that I had to take. So I had shepherd's pie, cottage pie, a lot of mash basically, um, mash with cheese to get a little bit of protein. I did try pureeing tuna. How anyone purees tuna, I do not know. Um, and I was trying to have um, yogurts. I've tried multiple protein yogurts and just found they weren't working for me. So I just stuck to like Greek yogurt um, and got my protein that way. I had some protein waters. I found a protein water that I could actually stomach, um, which was great. So that was pretty much what the soft food diet consisted of. And I was on that for two weeks. And I have just moved on to the soft food stage. So you tend to spend about two weeks at each food stage. Um, so now I'm four weeks post-op, I'm on the soft food stage. So this means that I can eat things as long as they don't need like a knife to cut them up. They have to be like um, breakable with a fork. So I can have a tuna jacket potato, but not the skins. I can have a shepherd's pie without blending it. I can have stew as long as the meat like falls apart by itself. In terms of other meats, all my meat needs to be minced meat at the moment so I can't really have like a chicken breast or something like that. I could have minced chicken, minced, minced turkey, minced pork, minced beef, that sort of thing. Um, so it is still a little bit limited but it's a lot more open than sort of the liquid and the pureed stage were. I know I'm really kind of rushing through these but a lot has happened in the past month so perhaps I probably should have done a video per food stage but I didn't know if there'd be enough to talk about for it to be interesting so if you do want to know a little bit more detail about those um, different stages let me know in the comments and I can maybe give you a little bit more information. As I was saying I'm on the soft food stage now and it is a bit easier. I'm just struggling at the moment because the thought of most food, the smell of most food, <laughs> makes me feel a bit queasy. Um, 
it's something that I've been struggling with for maybe the past two weeks. So I am finding it a little bit difficult to get enough food and enough protein into my body. I'm starting to find it a little bit easier with each day that passes, but it is something that I'm struggling with a little bit. I do have some anti-sickness tablets that I can take, but it's not that I feel like I'm physically going to be sick. It's more of a like, queasy feeling. I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone but me, but it's not that I think I'm actually going to be sick. I haven't been sick once um, since my surgery, which I'm very, very grateful for because I know that a lot of people do struggle with that, but I haven't experienced that. It's more that I just feel a bit queasy inside. And when you don't have as much of an appetite, well, anywhere near as much of an appetite, and the food that you can eat isn't necessarily what you would choose to be eating, and you also feel a bit queasy, it can be a little bit difficult to motivate yourself to eat. But I need to, and it's really important, and I've felt the effects of where I've maybe not been getting enough in, and I've really been struggling with feeling tired and lacking of energy and the ability to concentrate. Um, so if I am a bit rambly in this video, it's probably because I'm not 100% on top form with my um, ability to think straight. <laughs> but it, it is hopefully just gonna keep improving as I start to feel a bit less queasy and a bit more able to eat. And I have spoken to my dietitian and she said this is completely normal. Um, it, it, it's something that some people go through. It's nothing to be worried about. It's just, it's just part and parcel of recovery. And to be honest, in terms of the symptoms that I've had, I am grateful that this is what I've experienced. I, like I said, there hasn't been much pain. I didn't suffer from much gas pain after the operation. I haven't had any troubles with my incisions. They're healing beautifully. So I think, I think all, all in all, it hasn't been too bad. Editing Trina here. <laughs> I'm just watching this video back and I realised at this point that I didn't actually talk about something that I think people will probably want to know about and that was my hunger levels. So I have felt hunger, but I think the times that I felt hunger has been when I've been really struggling to get any food in for a significant amount of time. So like hours upon hours when that I've realised that I haven't eaten, be, be it that I've forgotten to eat or that I felt a bit queasy and not wanted to eat. I've maybe felt a minuscule amount of hunger at those points, but I have not been feeling hunger in the same way that I used to in any way, shape or form. My hunger has reduced massively which is great because that's kind of the point to an extent of the surgery. So my hunger has massively, massively been reduced. And I think had I been eating the amount that I should have been eating right now, I wouldn't have felt hungry at all. And in terms of feeling full, I didn't really talk a lot about the amount of food that I can eat at one point. So at this point, I should be eating about three to four tablespoons of food. So if I was having spaghetti bolognese, I'd have two, maybe three tablespoons of mince and one tablespoon of pasta because you have to prioritize protein above any other food groups. So I am pretty much able to eat most of that. Sometimes I end up having to leave a little bit. If I have a Weetabix, for example, I can eat about two thirds, three quarters of the Weetabix. I have uh, one singular Weetabix, 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 I'm not sure. Um, I tried to eat a whole one um, a, about a week ago and I ended up in bed because I was so full and I was someone that could eat three Weetabix, no problem. So that just goes to show, <laughs> Max has come to uh, keep me company. That just goes to show how much smaller my stomach is and what I'm able to take in. Not even a third of what I could easily eat before. If I eat scrambled eggs, for example. Sometimes I can get a whole leg in, sometimes I have to leave about a quarter on the plate. So hopefully that gives you a bit of insight into the amount that I can eat. I am meant to be eating sort of five times a day, so three meals, two or three snacks, so like five or six times a day. Um, I'm probably eating four or five times a day, tr trying to get up to that six. Um, but with the lack of appetite and feeling queasy, it is a bit difficult, but I do need to get myself into more of a routine. I feel like the past couple of weeks have been about surviving. Now it needs to be about setting those healthy habits that are gonna make this a sustainable and successful journey for me post-surgery. So 
just thought I'd jump in. Apologies for the camera quality, I'm on my laptop. Um, but I felt like that was sort of some key information that was missing. If I overeat, I feel it. I feel so full, so uncomfortably full for quite a while and have to just go and lie down. So the restriction is definitely working. Right. Back to past Trina. I have now started taking vitamins. You don't take those for the first couple of weeks on my program anyway, but now I'm taking vitamins for the past couple of days. So hopefully that will start to give me a little bit more energy and give me some of those nutrients that I'm not getting through food at the moment. It's funny, I'm in a group with some other women who've had weight loss surgery. Um, and I was talking to them about this queasy feeling and asking if anyone else was just like completely put off by food. Um, and someone said that they were just craving like uh, vegetables and crunchy salads and that sort of thing. And I said, that's interesting because I just saw someone eat an apple on TV and it looked like the m most incredible thing I've ever seen. And I've been like, I, I said yesterday, I was like, I really want a chicken Caesar salad. And I'm not a salad girl, but I've been craving like crunchy fruit and vegetables. And the person I was talking to in the group suggested that she'd seen that it's because our body isn't necessarily getting all the nutrients that it needs. So it's making us crave the food like fruit and vegetables that have those nutrients in. And I don't know if that's like scientifically correct or not, but it makes sense to me in terms of the experience that I'm having because I don't want mincemeat. I don't want cheese. I don't want yogurt. I want a chicken Caesar salad <laughs> and that is not me. I, I've had a couple that I've enjoyed in my life, but it's very rare that I pick a salad over a burger. Um, so I do think my body is screaming out for those nutrients. So hopefully now that I'm on the vitamins and when my food options open up when I move to the next stage at six weeks, I'll start to be able to get those in a little bit more. I can have berries at this stage. So I've been trying to have some like strawberries and raspberries in with my yogurt, but I just want, I want a crunchy grape, but we can't have grapes without peeling them because you can't have skin. And I don't really want to have a peeled grape. I want to have an apple. I want to have a juicy red apple. <laughs> so I am excited about my food options opening up. One thing that I have been experiencing that, well, two things, and I think this is pretty common um, with people who've had weight loss surgery is TMI, but gas and noises. So when I eat something, my body makes the strangest noises. Like when I'm sat at the table with Adam, I'm like, did you hear that? And he's like, yes, of course I did. I just, it's like gurgling in your chest. It's so bizarre. It doesn't hurt or anything. You feel it, but it's just a strange sensation. It's so bizarre and it's definitely audible for people to hear. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. And hand in hand with that is gas. So you probably hear a lot of weight loss surgery people, people who've been through weight loss surgery, talking about burps. They, they do come thick and fast. I don't know exactly why um, that is happening, but they are quite prevalent in my life right now. A little bit TMI, but it is, um, it is something that I need to get used to. And I'm a little bit nervous about being back out in public spaces. Like when I go back into the office for the first time in a couple of weeks, I'm like, or is all you're gonna hear is gurgling and burping from the corner. <laughs> but I'm hoping that settles down. And actually, whilst we're on the subject, things that are TMI, something I never thought I would be talking about on this channel, but bowel movements. <laughs> I have gone from someone who struggles in this area for one reason to the complete opposite reason. So um, I used to struggle with having too many bowel movements and now I have too few. So I've gone from pooping <laughs> multiple times a day, multiple times a day to maybe pooping twice a week, um, which is a very different experience for me. And I did have, um, for sort of the first week after surgery, I was starting to feel a little bit of constipation pain and I did think I was gonna have to take some laxatives or something like that, but nature did its job. <laughs> and now nature does its job every couple of days and I don't tend to feel any pain. So I imagine there's not too much of a buildup in there. Um, but your toilet habits will change after surgery. <laughs>
<laughs> TMI, I know, but I want to make sure you know the ins and outs of my experience. I'm an open book here. Um, so yeah, that is that is something that has been happening. <laughs> so it's been it's been an interesting month. I've had some ups and downs with it. I haven't ever felt regret, but I have sometimes sat there and gone, what did you do <laughs> when I'm sat in front of yet another bowl of food that I just mentally and physically do not want to eat but I know I need to I do sit there and go what on earth did you do to yourself <laughs> but it's, it isn't from a place of regret it's just from a place of this in this moment is not great but I do know that what I'm experiencing now is a short-term thing and that in like I can see with every week it does get a little bit better so I do know that the future is going to be much better like it's just it's just about getting there so <laughs> it's just it's just a bit of a journey but all in all as I said I don't regret it I'm really excited to see how things progress I'm really excited to move on to the next food stage which I believe is sort of like my new way of eating which I believe is my new way of eating I've got a call with my dietitian next week to talk about it so I think it's less of um like a focused food plan and more of a okay so this is how you should be eating going forward so I am excited about that um like I said I'm very excited about an apple it's not the most protein filled food but I think it's going to bring me immense satisfaction <laughs> um but I'm yeah I'm excited I'm still very excited I won't lie to you though it has been difficult especially the past two weeks because I have been so low on energy it has made just day-to-day -day life a little bit difficult especially now I'm back at work I have been finding myself to be quite exhausted and to um be struggling to do much more than work eat shower sleep <laughs> but I'm hoping that with every week that passes this gets a little bit easier I've just heard we are dog sitting for Adam's parents dog at the moment Max Max are you gonna come come up Ma oh well he didn't want to show himself on camera but he just ran up the stairs so if you just heard some banging that was Max Max are you gonna say hi to the camera Maxie come up come up <laughs> so this is Max He's just come back from a walk, so he's very excitable and a little bit moist. <laughs> so I just completely lost my trail of thinking there, but hopefully that gives you a really good overview of what my experience has been like for the past four weeks. My hopes for the next four weeks is to get back to living a bit more of a regular life. I'd love to get back to the gym, not necessarily to go and do like workouts per se, but even just to do some swimming or an aqua aerobics class, just to get myself moving a little bit more, to start integrating myself into normal life a little bit more, um, and to just feel a little bit more able to do things and to have more energy when I'm hopefully able to eat a little bit more. So just to finish off this video, I wanted to give you a bit of an update of what weight I have actually lost since starting this, so in my pre-op diet and in the four weeks post-surgery. So my pre-op diet was two weeks and I have a whole video on the pre-op diet, so I'll link that up in the cards. I don't know which side, that side or that side. <laughs> and in my pre-op diet, I lost 19.4 pounds. The goal of the pre-op diet wasn't to lose weight. As I said in that video, it is to shrink your liver so that it is easier to maneuver in surgery. But um, weight loss does come as a byproduct of how little you eat during that diet. So I did lose 19.4 pounds, which does blow my mind a little bit. In my first week post-op, I lost 10 pounds, um, which is, yeah, again, a very, very high amount to lose in one week. I was expecting to lose a good amount of weight that week, but I don't think I was expecting to lose 10 pounds in one week. In week two, I lost three pounds. In week three, I lost 3.2 pounds. And in week four, I lost 4.2 pounds. So that means at this point of time, being four weeks post-op and six weeks into this entire journey, if you take into consideration my pre-op diet, I am now 39.8 pounds down, which I am just so happy with overall. It's a little bit strange for me to be talking to you about this on my channel um, because previously in the past, I've never really talked specifically about my weight and I've definitely never talked about numbers. So I am finding it, I don't know, a little bit difficult to know how to talk about this because I am coming at this 
from a health perspective. So I'm not doing this to lose a certain amount of weight or to be a certain size. I'm doing this to feel better in my body. So it is, it, it's, it's an interesting experience going from that position and also being someone that hasn't been focused on the number on the scales for quite a few years now to then being caught back up into this um, world of weighing yourself and being like, what's the number gonna be? Have I lost enough this week? And really getting, caught up in that whole cycle of things which I sort of spent a long time trying to step away from. Um, so I think I'm finding it a little bit strange to talk to you about it on camera and I'm finding it a little bit strange to express maybe how I'm feeling because there's part of me that is over the moon that I've lost nearly 40 pounds. I think that's an incredible amount of weight to lose in such a short period of time. And I'm really glad to see those results because obviously I went through this really drastic surgery. Um, so I'm glad to see that it's working, but I'm also trying to balance that out with the fact that I don't wanna to get too um, focused on the number of the scales because my goal here is to feel better. And I think at the moment, I can't really focus on feeling better because like my friend asked me the other day, he's like, are you feeling better? Like, are you feeling the benefits of losing nearly three stone? And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not. Because at the moment, those benefits are outweighed by the fact that I'm tired and I'm lacking energy and I'm lacking strength. So maybe that's why at the moment, I'm maybe a little bit more focused on the number and the scales than I want to be because I can't focus on the like, physical changes in what I can do and what I can feel. Um, so yeah, if I seem a little bit awkward talking about this, it's because I am feeling a little bit awkward because it's kind of, it's really different to the approach that I've taken for the past couple of years. And if you've been with my channel for that time, you'll know where I'm coming from, that I really have tried to steer my health journey away from the number on the scales to how I'm feeling in my body. So it is, a bit different for me to be doing this, but I also really want to be transparent because for some people going on this journey, it is gonna be about the number on the scale. So I do want to share my full experience with you. I really don't wanna hide any of this experience. And if I didn't talk to you about the number that I'm losing, then I feel like I would be hiding part of it. So I'm happy is all that to say. I am happy 39.8 pounds in six weeks is I've never managed to lose more than like a stone and a half before I've put it back on. So to be almost at three stone down is something I'm very, very happy with. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, my next surgery related video is gonna be a Q and A. So if you've got any questions, do leave them down in the comments. And if there's anything that I sort of touched on in this video, burps. <laughs> if there's anything that I've touched on in this video that you'd like me to elaborate or talk about a little bit more, do let me know because I appreciate that I've kind of stuffed a lot of information into one video. My plan is to do a monthly update so that I can keep you updated on the weight loss and my experience, but I also want to come in with extra videos like Q&As or videos focused on specific topics if there's anything you want me to really hone in on focus on, if there's anything that you want me to pay a little bit more time and attention to then again let me know that down in the comments but thank you so so much for watching this video I am still very much at the start of this journey and I'm really excited to be sharing this with you so thank you so much for watching and again thank you so much for all your love and support on these videos it means the absolute world to me so thank you so much and thank you for watching I shall see you next time bye